Hey, it's Dr. John Terry, the Black Belt Leader, and welcome to the Black Belt Leadership Podcast, where each week I'm giving you tips, tools, insights, and resources to help you become a better version of who you are and what you do as you discover, develop, and deploy your own unique Black Belt Leader within. In this episode, I want to pose a simple question that has a powerful impact in your life when you take the time to answer it correctly. That question is this, is it worth it? Now, you may say, John, why are you asking, is it worth it? I don't even know what it is. Well, that's what we're going to talk about in today's Black Belt Leadership Podcast. You know, we're all pursuing something. We're all chasing after something in life. For some of us, it's money, fame, or recognition. For others of us, maybe it's a family or a career. For still others, maybe it's education, a hobby. Or maybe it's a passion or a mission that drives you from slumber every night to give you an opportunity to make a difference in the world. Now, other people may pursue a person. There may be a place they want to go or a state of being they want to achieve or someone they want to become. But whatever it is that you and I are chasing or pursuing, there's one question we've got to make sure we ask ourselves and be very candid frank, and honest in the response. Four little words that have a meaningful impact if we answer the question correctly. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it really worth it? So why this question? Because whatever it is, whatever we are pursuing, chasing, seeking to attain or acquire, Whatever we're pursuing has a cost associated with it. That pursuit, that chasing is going to demand something of you and I. So the question we need to take the time to consider, to ponder, to reflect upon, and to answer wisely is whether or not the reward we're pursuing is worth the cost required to obtain it. You know, I know of very few people who would spend a thousand dollars or more to obtain an item valued at a hundred dollars or less. You may say, John, why in the world would I do that? Well, that's a question I would ask of most people. It's not a good return on investment. And in fact, when I'm teaching sales psychology, one of the things I teach sales professionals is this, the perceived value of whatever it is that you are selling has to be seen as having more value, 2.6 times to be exact, of the dollars that they're spending for a customer to be comfortable and willing to make that purchase. Now, think about that. If the perceived value isn't more than the money they're willing to exchange for it, most people will say no to the offer. But far too many people will sacrifice years of their lives, They'll sacrifice relationship with the people close to them. And a lot of people will even take the hard-earned money that they have earned and throw it away to pursue and obtain something of little or lasting value. So I think the question, is it worth it, might be posed a little bit differently. And maybe we ask it this way. Of all the things that you and I are pursuing right now, we've got to ask ourselves this. Is it the best use of our time, our talent, and our resources to pursue and chase that now? You know, there is a time component that we have to consider. We're all given 24 hours a day. We're all given seven days a week. And no many times, doesn't matter how many times I rub the genie bottle, I can't create 26 hours in a day. I can't cross my fingers and wish and hope and do something magical to create eight days a week as much as I'd love to have the extra time. Nobody gets more than 24 hours a day. Nobody gets less than seven days a week. There's 1,440 minutes in a day. That's 86,400 seconds for us to invest in something. And what we do with that 86,400 seconds, that time, it's an investment. And if we choose to do nothing with that time that we've been given, we've squandered the opportunity to use that 86,400 seconds for something meaningful and productive. So you got to ask the question, is what you're pursuing 
worth the time you're investing to achieve it? If you don't know the answer, ask Chin Shi Wong. Now, if you don't recognize the name, Chin Shi Wong was the emperor of China from 221 to 210 BC. He's perhaps best known in the annals of history as the emperor who brought about the unification of China and the construction of the Great Wall. But Chen Shi Wang is also known for one of the most wasteful projects of time in history. Now, Chen Shi Wang ordered the construction of an elaborate tomb complex for his burial that included thousands of terracotta soldiers, horses, and chariots. If you're a history buff like I am, you've probably seen a documentary on what today are referred to in archaeological circles as the terracotta warriors. Now, this vast army of clay that he had manufactured was intended to accompany him into the afterlife and protect him. Tens of thousands of hours of manpower, probably hundreds of thousands of man hours of work involving thousands of workers over many, many years were invested in this project. Now, think about the benefit received for the time invested. Hundreds of thousands of hours of man working to be able to build these terracotta statues. They did absolutely nothing to protect the emperor while he was living, and they did absolutely nothing to protect the emperor once he was dead. Now, not only is there a time cost, there's a financial cost to whatever it is that you and I are pursuing in life. And just as we do with time, we've got to ask ourselves if what we're spending our money on is worth the investment that we're making. Now, money in economic terms is a medium of exchange for goods and services. When you and I work, we're trading time for money. If we work 40 hours a week and we get two weeks vacation a year, we're investing 2,000 hours a year to earn a paycheck. Now think about that. 2,000 hours a year over a 30, 40, or 50 year career. That's a lot of hours that you're investing in yourself, but you're also investing in someone else to receive the paycheck that allows you to have a medium to exchange for the goods and services you want to buy. But what you and I spend that money on says a lot about us and what we're pursuing and whether or not we're being good stewards of the money that we've worked so hard to earn. Ask Louis the Sixteenth. Now, Louis the Sixteenth was the emperor of France. He was the king of France. He ruled during a tumultuous time in France's history in the 18th century that led up to the French Revolution in 1789. Louis's pursuit was focused on his personal desires. He lived an extravagant lifestyle and he engaged in out-of-control spending of the tax dollars that were collected from the people to satisfy his own whims and fancies and that out-of-control spending significantly contributed to the financial crisis taking place in France. Louis XVI was more concerned with his creature comforts and satisfying his personal desires than he was of being a good steward of the public trust and making decisions that provided for the welfare and well-being of his people. Hint, Louis XVI, I want to call him Henry, Louis XVI squandered the people's money on these elaborate parties that he held for the elites of society. And while the elites of society were dining on the finest foods in the kingdom in these extravagant, palatial settings, the rest of the kingdom suffered in squalor. While they were eating the finest in the land, the rest of the people were struggling to find something to eat, clothing to wear, and a warm, comfortable place to take care and protect their families. Now, because Louis XVI failed to address the social and economic challenges of his time, the economic challenges that were plaguing his people, the people ultimately revolted. That became the French Revolution. 
The improper spending of the nation's treasury and the neglect of the people he had been put in charge of caring for resulted in Louis XVI overthrow and a public beheading by the guillotine. Now, not only is there a time cost, not only is there a money cost, in the pursuit of anything in life, there's also a personal cost. There is a physical, mental, and emotional toll that is exacted on our bodies and on our minds as we pursue or chase anything in life. You know, when you think about it, there's only so many things we can do in a day. There's only so much energy and effort that we can put forth to the things that we're pursuing in life. You and I, we can't give more than 100% of ourselves at any time because that's all we've got to give. Yeah, you can give less. You can give 70, 80, 90%, but you can never give more than 100% of yourself because 100% of yourself is all you ever have to give. So the question is, is the personal cost worth it? Well, why don't you ask Kobe Bryant? Now, if you don't know the name Kobe Bryant, he was perhaps one of the best players to ever play the game of basketball. Kobe started his basketball workouts well before the sun rose each morning. He would get up early around 4 a.m. and he would push himself through a grueling two-hour workout. And he would then pause, eat breakfast, allow his body to recover, do what needed to be done, and then he was back on the floor or back in the gym, pushing himself through another two-hour workout. That's mid-morning. He would then take a lunch break, a little bit of rest, and once again, he was back on the floor, again pushing himself through another grueling two-hour workout before he took a break for dinner and a rest. And then, you guessed it, he was back on the court, pushing himself through yet another two-hour workout before ending his day. Eight hours a day taxing his body, his mind, and his emotions to rise to the level of world class. And he did that day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year to become one of the greatest to ever play the game. Now, Kobe understood there is a personal cost to success, and he was willing to pay it every single day. He pushed his body to the limit. He endured the physical, the mental, and the emotional toll that it placed on him as a person because he understood there is a price to pay for greatness, and he was willing to pay the price. And as we look at his career and all of the fame and fortune and prestige it brought him, it paid off well for him. Now, compare Kobe Bryant's success and his willingness to pay the cost and reap a reward to that of Percy Fawcett. You may say, John, who in the world is Percy Fawcett? Well, Percy Fawcett was a British geographer and he was an archaeologist who early on in his career became obsessed with finding the mythical city of Z. And you may say, what is the mythical city of Z? Well, maybe you know it by another name, the fabled golden city of El Dorado. This city was supposedly hidden in the uncharted Amazon jungle, and Fawcett became obsessed with finding El Dorado. So starting in the early 20th century, he undertook multiple expeditions to South America to search for this fabled city of gold. And as he traveled, he endured numerous challenges, harsh living conditions, pestilence and disease, and dangerous encounters with indigenous tribes on each and every quest into the Amazon jungle. And each time he came back empty-handed. In 1925, Fawcett embarked on his final expedition. He took with him his son Jack and a friend named Raleigh Rimmel. Now, the trio disappeared into the Amazon jungle just as Fawcett had done many times before, but this time, he never returned. That trio was never seen and they were never heard from again. And the mystery of their disappearance has never been solved despite multiple expeditions seeking to locate them or to find some evidence of their remains. Now, Fawcett, 
his son, and his friend endured substantial physical, mental, and emotional duress during their pursuit of this fabled city of El Dorado, only to pay the ultimate cost with their lives. Their personal investment cost them everything, but yielded nothing. So the question is, was it worth it? For Fawcett, the answer appears to be no. But for Kobe Bryant, the answer was definitely yes. So what about you? Let's make it personal as we ask this question, is it worth it? Is it worth the time you're sacrificing? Is it worth the energy you're expending? And is it worth the resources you're investing in the pursuit of someone or something? Maybe a better question is this. Is what you're pursuing truly going to make an impactful difference in your life or in the lives of other people, or is it simply feeding your ego in the moment? Is what you're pursuing something that's truly meaningful, truly satisfying, and truly fulfilling for you, or when you finally arrive and you finally obtain, achieve, or acquire it, is it going to leave you still wanting, still yearning, and still desiring for something more? Are you pursuing momentary success or lasting significance? You know, as my mentor John Maxwell says, once you've tasted significance, success will never really satisfy. So let me wrap up today's lesson with this. We're all pursuing something and we've got to ask ourselves whether it, whatever it is, whether it is worth what it's going to demand of us to achieve, acquire, or obtain it. We don't want to spend our lives in the relentless pursuit of something that's going to cost us more than what we'll obtain as a result of acquiring whatever it is we're seeking to pursue. You know, you don't want to spend your life climbing a ladder to get to the top, only to arrive at the top to discover that ladder is leaning against the wrong wall. But if we don't pause and ask ourselves whether it is worth it, whatever it is, we may end up doing exactly that. Climbing the ladder only to discover it wasn't leaning where it needed to be leaning to get us to where we truly wanted to go. What you and I pursue, what you pursue says a lot about you. It speaks to what you value, and it speaks to what you truly desire in life. So I have to ask you the question, is what you're pursuing worth the price you're going to pay and are already paying? Remember, you're giving up a part of yourself to acquire, to obtain, and to acquire it. So you better count the cost, and you better make sure it's worth what you're willing to spend and what you've already spent. Hey, I'm Dr. John Terry, the Black Belt Leader. Thanks for joining me for this Black Belt Leadership Podcast. Have a great day.